We are exactly one month away from the trade deadline. Break out the machine because Run It Back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah. Good Monday it morning all. and welcome run to yeah, Run yeah. It Back. I want to immediately introduce everyone because I know Chandler had a big weekend, but Chandler has a big every day, so it's really hard to start to differentiate between them all. But before we can get to that, first of all, Stadium Insider Sham Sharania is always gracing us with his presence. On the end there, you see Eddie G, very serious and stern on a Monday morning. <laughs> and Chandler, okay, take us through what happened over the weekend. So we're here, we're at Chileno Bay, uh, and I'm shooting just a scorching 90, 93 going into this oh shot. God. Yeah, it was bad. There was alcohol involved, and it was a 150-yard nine-iron par three right in the cup. Um, <laughs> you, you, you can't hear Chandler on the right now, but on the video, he says, where'd it go? Like he had yeah. no clue what happened. Here I go. Where's I'm your shirt? Honest. I'm going to be honest with you. I drove. So my buddy told me it was long. So I drove the cart around the back of the green and I'm like, bro, there's no ball back here. And the caddy like walked <laughs> up to the hole and I thought they were messing with me, but it was, it was my first ever one. And it was, let me tell you something. All of Cabo heard about this shot by the time I was done. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's like a lifetime achievement award right there. Um, do we address the no shirt? Is this a special club where shirts aren't required? What is this? It's one of these discovery properties where there are zero rules. So there's no <laughs> shoes, there's no shirt, hat on backwards. It is not a classic stuffy golf course to say the I least. I love that. God, that collared shirt thing always bothered me. That's very, very well done, sir. Um, I, I see you celebrated, so I'm not going to say I hope you guys had fun afterwards because I know that you did. Um, basketball was played over the course of a lot of basketball was played. Nets heat. This was a doozy. The Nets barely surviving this as a game-winning attempt by Jimmy Butler in the Heat. The Nets are now 14-1 and one over their last 15. Obviously, in this moment, the whistle was swallowed. Uh, do we agree with the non-foul call on Butler's last shot here, Chandler? Um, I mean, that one's, that one's tough because Royce tries to go vertical there, but he definitely kind of comes down a little bit. It's, it's a 50-50 call. There's there's hmm. calls like this every single night. They're just not on the magnifying glass at the end of a game, but it's tough. You, you never want the game to end over a controversial call. It, it always seems to be the case, but this is why coaches tell you to drive the, the ball to the basket at the end of the game and not settle because usually – you get the benefit of the doubt here and 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 jimmy didn't at home <laughs> it's frustrating but this is a big win for for me for brooklyn nets because this isn't an easy game everyone knows that's sweet to go play the heat on the road um and they showed me something here by by finishing this game off and getting the dub and that they're a super dangerous team going forward yeah I, uh obviously not a foul but <laughs> jimmy flopped he tried it it's a tough call. I mean, if, if that was on the other end of the court, Jimmy wouldn't have wanted that foul to be called on him as well. It, 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 Royce right. tried to go vertical. He's within the halo. It, it, it's a body bump, but that's basketball. He, he missed him with the hand, thankfully. I think if he had smacked him, he'd have got the call. But, yeah, I, just like Chandler said, it's a great win for the Nets. It was, it was a rough shooting night all around. They, they just were kind of going back and forth. Um, they were obviously dealing with Bam and everybody thinks they're this small team and, and, and they stepped it up. And then, of course, Kevin goes down and they have a big fourth quarter to finish off the win. Um, you know, tough game. It's tough to win out there in Miami, especially when you get to spend the whole weekend out there. Yeah. Uh, but, but they took care of business and, and now they have a big game coming up on Thursday. The, the biggest of the games. I will say this. The, the Heat announcers were going nuts, but to Jimmy Butler's credit after the game, he said, nah, it wasn't a foul. I should have made that shot. So he's saying all the right things. And Eddie, you touched on the fact that KD did go down. Butler lands on his leg or his knee in an awkward way. So Shams, I ask you, today's day for Kevin Durant is going to consist of what? Well, first, he's got to go get an MRI at some point here this morning and as the day goes on and get further testing on that knee. But I think the one optimistic sign that occurred last night is that, yes, he was on the ground and in a similar fashion to last year when Bruce Brown kind of fell into his knee. Uh, but the one saving grace is that he ran up the court, ran back down the court, had a couple defensive slides, and then he realized something was off with his knee um, and went back. He did not move around like that last year. So that's the one sign that 
you know, potentially this is not as serious or as significant of an absence as last year when he missed about six weeks with the MCL sprain in his knee. So the Nets are going to be hopeful that he's going to be able to uh, you know, make it back sooner rather than later. But I would expect them to take a cautious approach, especially with just two games this week. I, I mean, look, they're on a nice little tear. Um, maybe he can afford a little bit of time to sort of chill out. But how concerned are you as far as this streak and this Nets team doing what they're doing without him? Uh, I mean, there is concern. You're losing your best player. You're losing what's probably your best defender as well. You're losing 30 points a game. Kevin hasn't missed a free throw since Christmas. Like he he's on a tear right now. And, uh, you know, so it's going to be tough. I think it's time for a lot of guys to step up. Ben Simmons has opportunity to really put his mark on this team. Um, Royce O'Neal can be a little more consistent with what he's doing with his shooting as well. And I think they can tread water. They obviously have a tough game with the Celtics coming up and they have the thunder and then they go out West. And so it's not the easiest schedule that they'll have for however Kevin is out. If he's out, you know, he was in good spirits yesterday and, and we'll find out more today. And, but I, I'm with Shams. I expect them to take it slow. I, I think they should take it slow. I would tell Kevin to take it slow. Uh, and so it's just, it's just on the guys to tread water. Kyrie has been amazing. And I think, you know, he can pick up a lot of the slack as well. And, and yeah, we'll see what they can do. Yeah, you, you just got to hope for the best on the injury like this. This is, you know, this this sucks. And, and hopefully the scans and the MRIs come back positive and clean and, and he can get out there and hoop because what he's doing this year is, is impressive. And he's right there in the MVP hunt. And, and the, the fact that he's taken this team to one of the top two or three, four teams in the Eastern Conference is incredible. So uh, like Eddie just said, this kind of falls on the other guys. This is a great opportunity for Ben Simmons to, to, to get back going, to kind of, you know, fill that void, to be that long athletic wing that can go coast to coast, that can initiate the offense. And he doesn't need to score 30 points. They have Kyrie Irving that can do that. But I look for guys like you know, like Curry and TJ Warren. All these other guys are going to have to collectively fill in because no, not one person can, can replace Kevin Durant. But I'm just hoping that it's nothing serious. <laughs> And because man, they're 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 an impressive, fun team to watch. But when they're healthy and and the league is better with KD in it, yeah. And my hot take is that they're coming out of the East. So I hope I didn't jinx it because I do feel like I have witch like powers in those regards. Um, here's a team I can't jinx because they do it to themselves. How about the Clippers? Clippers and Hawks. Clippers lose their sixth straight. They're now sitting there at 500, seventh in the West. Uh, I, I, we don't need to go into the 20 minute spiel about Kawhi Leonard and when he does and doesn't play. But as far as the concern for this Clippers team that had the highest of expectations, Chandler, how concerned are you at this point? Yeah, I'm concerned. And, and it starts with Kawhi and Paul George, obviously. But this is tough because the Clippers and the Suns had such high expectations and the West is kind of wide open. There are good teams like Denver and Memphis and New Orleans, but there's no clear cut favorite. So it's, it's tough to see a team with this kind of depth and this kind of star power take a slide. Obviously we're all going to wonder how good they can be with PG and Kawhi on the court at the same time. And, and they do have the depth and the pieces to kind of stay afloat while they go through droughts like this, but I'm concerned because we're not exactly in the beginning of the season anymore. This is kind of starting to create the identity of who teams are and their rotations and their offensive schemes and defensive sets. This is starting to become who they are. Um, and the West, like I said, is wide open. So they have a great opportunity here. And, and again, same thing that we just talked about with the Nets when KD goes down. This is this goes now on Norman Powell. This goes on John Wall. This goes on, on these other guys that are going to get the opportunities, that are going to get the minutes. They're going to have to come up big just to kind of get the Clippers off the snide here and, and keep them in the hunt. Yeah, it's, it's really concerning. That was their 42nd game of the season. A lot of teams are coming up, going to play their 41st, which is the halfway mark. And to me, this is who you are. You're, you're an injury riddled team. You're a team that just has zero consistency and they're just lackadaisical. It seems like most nights, uh, you, you, when you have them, right. They've, they've done well. You could see the blueprint of like, yo, this is This team could make a deep playoff run, but they've been this now for three months. And I have no reason to believe they're, they're just suddenly going to turn it on and be healthy, be consistent and be as sharp as they need to be to make a run. Um, yeah, tons of concern. And luckily for them, I mean, they have a lot of roster flexibility if they want to make some moves. But, you know, John Wall has kind of fallen off a cliff. They need to figure out their playmaking, their point guard situation. I know 
Reggie has been solid in times, but they've clearly tried to upgrade and, and find more help there as they can. And then, you know, look, Kawhi gets on the court yesterday and then Paul George is off the court. So it's just it's just ongoing. And, and the Hawks have not looked great the last few weeks. No. And they went in there and walked through them like it was nothing. So, you know, they finally get the benefit of the doubt with the second L.A. game for everybody making their L.A. trip, whereas the Lakers were catching everybody on the back to back and 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 they blow it. So, yeah, really concerning for them. And, and when you look at the top of the West and as jumbled as the West is, they don't look like one of the favorites out there anymore. I would love to give truth serum to Ty Lue and Lawrence Frank and all those guys as far as how pissed they must be on a daily basis. I mean, they've been on the court for 13 games out of the 42, 13. And remember when Ty Lue was asked about how many games you guys need to really get this thing going. And he said 15 altogether. I don't know that he's getting his 15 altogether this season. Shams, that being said, uh, have they told, have they talked? Is there some truth being spread as far as the frustration level, maybe behind the scenes there at the Clippers? I mean, Ty Lue has spoken about it publicly, right? Like when he's been asked about both of their guys' health and having them in the lineup, you could just see the exasperation, uh, you know, in his tone, on his face. And so it's definitely tough. This is a Clippers team that I think has only won two of 10 games without both of those guys in the lineup. They're 10 and 14 on the season without Kawhi Leonard in the lineup. This is a guy uh, that they were having some success with. You know, Ty Lue was treading water uh, through the first couple months of the season. And we were all, you know, I, I came on, praised Ty Lue, the job he was doing. But at the end of the day, it's imperative to have Kawhi Leonard, Paul George on the floor. This has been, you know, four years, I think, now of this of this process, right? They signed these guys in 20, they got Kawhi Leonard uh, via via free agency. They, they traded for Paul George in 2019. So they've had, this is now year four of this this process that they've underwent. And they've had injuries. They've had different things that they can look at. The bubble year, um, they had the Kawhi Leonard's ACL. This should have been a no-excuse season, but they've still had guys in and out of the lineup. So it's imperative for them to get these guys in the lineup because six losses in a row is not what this team wanted at a point where they thought they'd get these guys back in the lineup and they'd find a groove, find a stride going to all-star break. Uh, it's been anything uh, but that as of right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, and, and the expectations being so high is what's why it's so frustrating for these guys. When you have two top 10 players like this or that are supposed to be, the expectations are championship or bust. And they added so much depth, so much shooting. They have size. On paper, the Clippers are, smart, were kind of my favorite going into the season. Like, they were supposed to be very good. And now it's, it's just frustrating. And, and they're running out of time on getting these guys chemistry and getting these guys on the floor together and having these other guys knowing how to play off them and where they like their ball, where their spots are. So, like I said, we're getting into games 40, 50, we're approaching all-star week. These guys are not doing anything on the court together, and, and it's kind of the key to their entire season and team. So it's, it's definitely frustrating. It's definitely concerning. But on the flip side, they are one team that are, is extremely deep, and the West is still wide open. So in the back of my head, I'm still giving them time and benefit of the doubt, but, man, they, they need to get it in gear quick. I don't know, man. Like the, there was that game last week where they were blown out. Kawhi didn't really play, and then load manage the next day. Like there's, this is – I, I would be pissed. Let's just say that if I was you a Clippers fan and I was paying, Michelle. yeah, like if I'm paying thousands and thousands <laughs> of dollars to go to it and I never get to see this team the way it's supposed to be. I, like at some point I've already done this whole, I've been mad at Kawhi in my life thing and I don't want to do it again, but it just feels very frustrating. And, and I feel for the fans of the team. Um, thank God I'm not one. Okay. We can go from one team who's underperforming to another team who's greatly underperforming in the Phoenix Suns. They've lost six in a row, nine of 10, Granted, they, they played last night without Booker or CP3, um, but they're 20 and 21 on the season right now, Chandler. Again, high expectations. How much trouble or how, how deep is this hole they're digging themselves? Yeah, they're in big trouble. I think they're in more trouble than the Clippers. They're they're in the principal's office right now. Like it, it is not <laughs> good for them. Just everything surrounding this team. I feel like we talk about it all the time with the first the ownership and DeAndre Ayton drama. But I will say that they're missing three starters, and they pretty much have been for a lot of the season. And, and Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Cam Johnson, those are critical pieces to the way they play, and especially Devin Booker. You take Devin Booker off this team, they're not very good. These other guys can play around him. They have talent. They have pieces. But Devin Booker is, is the obvious key to this team. And when you look at the standings, they're a half game out of the play-in all of a sudden. But they're still two and a half games out of the home court advantage. So, again, there's time here. Um, and I think with, with them, it's health. I do think they missed their window. And, but, yeah, and they're just they're, they're not really that champion. Albert team 
man, these other teams in the West are, are, are kind of keeping it wide open for up for grabs for anybody, but they're, they're going to need Devin Booker because they are not very good without him. Yeah. I mean, that's the issue right there. They need Devin Booker. The, the, the standings are tight and they can tread water. They can hang around and they're one in their last 10, but they can, they can, you know, figure out some wins somewhere and keep up with some of these teams, but they need Devin Booker to actually make a run. And if they get Devin Booker, they absolutely can win a play on game, the playing game. They absolutely can win a round one series. They, and, and then who knows from there, but they got to get booked back and to see him miss time, come back immediately, leave the game and miss more time is definitely concerning. Who knows what they get with Jay Crowder. I think you know, if the Lakers do make a run and they're sneaking up, they're creeping up. We're talking about them in a second. This will probably be the team that drops out and, and, and opens up the space for the Lakers to actually sneak into the playoffs. Um, it, it, it's bad, and there's no signs of it improving anytime soon because we don't know when Devin Booker's coming back. 2-10 and ten without Devin Booker this year. Like, that's the type of team that they are. I mean, it's, it's the, the facts of the facts. The record Oof. is the record, and I think that's what they've shown, unfortunately. And this team just doesn't have the depth right now Campaign has missed time with a foot injury himself. Landry Shaman's been in and out of the lineup at times as well. Cam Johnson remains out. I think there is hope he's going to be back at some point this month. He's starting to do more dunk, uh, doing more in pregame. So that's a positive sign. Uh, but a lot of the burden on Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, Mikhail Bridges, uh, they don't have the depth right now. And we'll see when they pull the trigger on a Jay Crowder deal. You would expect it to be sooner than later because this team needs bodies, especially on the bench, to provide some depth. Uh, but they, they've clearly shown a level of patience that they will only move Jay Crowder when they feel like they've gotten the 3-4 type player. Uh, but it's very, it's very rare. A team that's training for Jay Crowder, uh, they usually don't have that 3-4 to get a guy like Jay Crowder. So um, the, the Suns are in a tough spot. I, I agree with, with Chandler. This is, this is a really tough position that they're in. I feel like we have been awakened every day thinking, is today the day Jay Crowder moves? But it's just not happening. So it's a very desperate, weird situation. Uh, time to talk a little America's team, shall we? The Sacramento Kings. Oh, that's right. They are who we love right now the most. The beam team. Um, look, they were on the uh, a controversial foul call receiving end on Saturday. De'Aaron Fox, three seconds left. Score tied at 134. Dennis Schroeder was the beneficiary. He went on to hit both of his foul shots. And then Fox leaves the arena, doesn't speak to reporters, later goes on the old Twitter box and says uh, a caption that said, let the players just decide the game. He then deletes it. Um, I mean, look, he's upset, Chandler. How upset would you be if you were in his shoes? I mean, I'd be upset because I actually don't think he fouled him here. But this is the same thing that I was just talking about with, with the Jimmy Butler foul. With the game on the line, you would much rather see someone drive the ball to the basket like this and put that onus on the referee. And most of the time it works. They're going to blow the whistle, but sometimes they don't. And for Jimmy Butler, he, you know, he didn't get it. But, I mean, look, does he kind of hip him right here and give him a little bit? Sure. But, I mean, I'm with Fox. Like, this is this is game on the line, NBA. Like, you're calling this a, a foul to essentially lose the game. I'm upset. Uh, I don't think tweeting anything is going to help. I think he's now just going <laughs> to looking at a, at a fine here. But uh, this is exactly what Schroeder should do here. He should he should make them blow the whistle, which he did. And then he stepped up and made the free throws. So it's frustrating. But again, one play usually doesn't end the game. But yeah, I'm pissed off on Sacramento because I didn't have a challenge, I guess. And, and this wasn't really a foul. Like, I think if they review that, I don't know if they keep it as a foul. I mean, look, we started yeah. the show with the Jimmy Butler play, so it feels, you know, full same thing, here. right? This is <laughs> like what you like, do, but... Yeah, different ref crew, though, Eddie. It, the air is right. Let the players decide it, and, and, and that's why a call in that in that moment is so frustrating for for really anybody. The fans. I mean, I guess not the Lakers. They were excited at the game, but it, it, it's it's frustrating as a viewer watching that, and that's why, you, yeah, you, you get why he's annoyed. But it, that's not why they lost the game. The 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 Kings had plenty of opportunities to score down the stretch. The Lakers actually played really great defense. There's a video going around with their rotations and you know, LeBron with a crazy closeout on the wing, which you don't see as much anymore. Um, you know, the, the Lakers put them in a bad spot. And on top of that, De'Aaron, like you got beat right for no reason. The, the, he just walked right by you and put you in that spot. I don't think it was a foul. I think, you know, that's basketball. You're, you're, you're going to bump into each other a little bit, kept his hands off him. But, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they have more reasons why they lost the game other than that call. So yeah, I'm with Fox, let the players decide the game, but the, the players kind of did, and, and, and it was the Kings deciding to lose. 
that temptation to tweet a reaction is so great. And he couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't help himself, but he did realize after. All right, so LeBron James and Sam Amick, uh, this is on the roster plans. <laughs> Y'all know what the F should be happening. Um, this is the thing, though, because then Sam had the whole article, and here's his wording, more here on his waning patience and how his greatness is forcing the conversation. So, of course, LeBron takes to Twitter to clarify that. Hey, Sam, actually, my patience isn't waning. You make it sound like I'm frustrated when I'm really not. I told you over and over, my job is focused on the guys in the locker room. My job isn't the roster. No, we'll get to that. Uh, Shams, the realities of the Lakers and what they have as far as trade options is what? We, we've been talking about the trade uh, front with the Lakers like every single day. I think the reality has been the reality, which we've spoken about over the last several weeks. They only have two first round picks that are eligible to be traded as of right now for the rest of the decade. Now, they're going to have more picks open up as the years go on. But right now they have two first round assets and, and their position. And I think one that other teams have felt is, is one of being cautious with those picks and, and really being careful in terms of deciding what trade they want to make. You don't want to burn those picks uh, you know, the, the, the few valuable assets that you have, you don't want to burn them on a trade that's barely going to move the needle, especially with the uncertainty of Anthony Davis' health status. When exactly he's going to be back? I, I do think he's making a level of progress. They're still not sure when exactly it'll be. We're already nearing the mid-month uh, period that's going to mark the one-month mark of his absence. Uh, as we spoke about, it could be even longer than that uh, when, when he comes back. But I, I don't think there's an expectation that the Lakers are going to do much that's of significance in this trade market just because of the uncertainty of the season because you don't want to burn those picks and it's not going to move the needle for where you're really expecting to go. I, I do think there are people on this roster that do understand that predicament this team is in. Not a great predicament at all, Eddie. So as far as the influence that LeBron has on this roster and the building of this roster, how, how much does he have? I mean, look, it's been widely reported. They call him the GM for a reason. They He called himself <laughs> that jokingly. Like, he, we understand the implication. We understand the idea that if we make a big move, we're going to talk to LeBron. This is a partnership. The Lakers have called it that over and over and over since they've signed him. Magic Johnson at his house at midnight on, on the deadline day. Like, let's let's be honest. And so that's what I don't understand about these quotes here. And it's just about LeBron in general. There's a little bit of a lack of accountability here. It's been widely reported that him and AD are the ones who pushed for Russell Westbrook and that trade that has essentially gutted the rest of their future assets and, and, and put them in a weird place. You can play all that for Anthony Davis and you eventually get a title, but then to break up that gang to get Russ, a little bit of looking in the mirror there as well for, for LeBron and for AD, the reports are true. The thing I don't understand about this and then the recant later is, yo, you did say this. Like, it doesn't matter how we read that, what tone. Yo, you saying mid five game streak, we know what we need to do with this roster, cuss word, cuss word, whatever. That's <laughs> clear. There's no mixing that up. There's no like, yo, I was sitting there with a smile on my face. However you said it, you're telling the world and your general manager uh, that, yo, something needs to happen. You're also telling your teammates that it's not the first time you've told your teammates that. So nope. it's, you know, look, there's a lot going on here. And the fact that you said this after the fifth game in a fifth five game win streak is hilarious. So when you run the Twitter to then clarify what you said, you know, you, you stepped in it and look, it is what it is. This is LeBron. This is a LeBron experience. He can't be traded this year. And we're already talking about him. Can he be traded this summer? Will he be traded? Will he ask out? What is he going to do? Who knows? It's it's LeBron. You got to do what LeBron says, or you got to send him to Brooklyn, maybe, and let him win a title there. <laughs> oh God, you want that? Hey, wait, I, I you like would want fit. that? Hold on. I like, yeah, I, I, I like I like the idea of point for LeBron with Kyrie, KD, oh, Nick Claxton God. playing defense. I, I I could see it. Look at Chandler; he's nodding. He can see. I is not the remnants of that team. <laughs> Wait, is he uh, nodding good or bad? I can't tell. Let me tell you guys something. First of all, LeBron would be unbelievable on the Nets. But when I was a second and third year player in Houston, I had juice with Daryl Morey. They would ask players, top one, top two, top three players, do you like this guy? Do you think he'd mesh well? Same thing happened then in Dallas with Cuban and with Carlisle. I had juice. If you don't think for a second LeBron James has... <laughs> Complete control, 
at least going, bouncing ideas off him. And that's what's so confusing to me is, is he frustrated? Yes, he should be. He's having an unbelievable season. He's not getting much help. But if you think for, that he didn't okay these moves in the offseason to put them in this situation, you're out of your goddamn mind. Rich Paul <laughs> controls that team. LeBron, LeBron James controls Rich Paul. There is no way that he wasn't okay with these moves. And yeah, they're not working out and the team's probably going to miss the playoffs. And, and, and that's a tough break, but to sit here and, and say this and act like you're clueless about the, you know, the team and the s- design of the team, that's not, that's, that can't be true because if, Chandler Parsons, if Chandler Parsons got access and juice with the GMs and the owners when he was playing, <laughs> LeBron James definitely does. So it's frustrating for him. They're losing. The team's not working. But it's hard for me to believe that he didn't okay these moves this offseason. So that's the problem, right? Like, for those of us who do not care for LeBron James' antics, this is a very prime, passive-aggressive example of why we get so irritated. It's because on the one hand, we know how things went down or we know how big a role you had. And by the way, I don't argue with that. If I have LeBron James on my team, I'm 100% going to him about everything, right? But I can't have yeah. you with the same breath turn around and then feign stupidity as far as like, I don't really know what's going on back here. Like, that's the problem. I don't, you can't do both. It's weird to say, you know what the fuck should be happening and then try (laughs) and be, sorry for cursing, and then try and be politically (laughs) correct on your own social platform and kind of ease the pain a little bit of what you just said. So it, it, that that's where it gets a little confusing and it's obvious that LeBron James is the best player probably of all time. Well, Why wouldn't exactly. they ask him? Why wouldn't they get his blessing? Why wouldn't they say, would this? Would you want to play with this guy? You have to make him happy. You have to make Joel Embiid happy in Philly. I guarantee you there's not a trade this deadline. Joel Embiid doesn't okay. That's just how yeah. it works. No doubt. I love, Le- I, I love LeBron. I think he's the GOAT. I think, you know, he's smarter than he's pretending he is on Twitter because he knows who Sam Amick is. He knows what that quote means. He, does. he knows what it means when he sits down with the other network and has a sit down with them on a night. They don't even have a game. I don't know why he's <laughs> sitting down talking to them, having a one-on-one, but it, whatever. He knows exactly what he's doing. Th- this is, this is LeBron. Like he, the basketball IQs out the chart. He has an agency and kept it all above ground because somehow it makes sense. It's cool. I love LeBron. He's running the game. He's running the team. He knows exactly what he's doing and how to do it. And if he's playing his passive aggressive, don't fit out, fit in game and, and whatever. He's done it before. Trust me, that team is made in the image of LeBron. I'm talking if they want to wear blue uniforms tomorrow and he wants to wear purple, mm-hmm. what color do you think the Lakers will be wearing when they trot out on that court? It's It just is what it is. So LeBron is hilarious. I get what he's doing. I guess he's putting public pressure on Rob Palenka to make some move. I don't know what that move is. Like Shams already said himself, I, I don't I know what he's my expecting. I, I, <laughs> I, I would not hold my breath on, on, on a Lakers move. But listen, th- this, this is my thing. It's like you ask any player in the NBA, especially a top player, of course they're going to say, I want moves made. So I, I don't – like, like yeah. yeah, I guess you caught LeBron in this moment. But like you ask any of these top players, whoever it is, yeah, of course you want upgrades made to the team. Uh, but again, the reality of this situation, and I'm here only for the reality, is that there's not <laughs> – as of right now, the Lakers aren't in the marketplace to make a significant trade because of those two first-round picks, the uncertainty about Anthony Davis' health status, and just that star player isn't available on the marketplace. And they're not just going to make moves on the margins for a team that, even if you add a player like that, you don't know where you're going. So that's the reality situation. That's all you know I'm going to speak on. And you know <laughs> that we're going to get a lot more passive aggression, and it's going to be awesome. And we're here for every single bit of it. Uh, I'm taking a quick break. When we come back, Shams has the latest on... <gasps> the dunk contest and speaking of dunks the latest edition of that man has a family when run it back returns run it back yeah yeah run it up run it back run it up run it back run it up run it back back to go bears one to turn over by tar easton now to kj mar oh, oh my goodness did he dunk from the free throw line Impressive. Look at this, Tari Eason says, KJ, show me how it's done. And Tori Prince, man, I didn't Where did he know. Where did he jump from? Where did yeah. he jump from? He's outside the outside the dotted for sure. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't free throw. Oh, my goodness. Looked like he was, what, about a foot and a half or so? Foot and a half is always a good way to be described. All right, so that was <laughs> KJ Martin, uh, which is perfect timing in what we call a segue in this business. Uh, because, Shams, you do have some breaking late information on the dunk contest. Still my favorite. 
Yes, uh, KJ Martin, the son of longtime NBA player Kenyon Martin, uh, he's committed to doing the NBA slam dunk contest at All Star Weekend in Salt Lake City in February. Uh, you know, for for KJ Martin, he's had a nice breakout season, over 10 points a game, great shooting percentage. He had like three highlight dunks just last night. He he's good for at least <laughs> one or two highlight plays every single night. Uh, that's why he's so exciting to watch. That's why he's transformed himself into a really good 3 and D wing type player, uh, able to get to the rim. So he's he's your first, uh, one of your first two commitments for the dunk contest this year. All right, this is good. I mean, I, I, I still would like some more. I think John Morant was one of the people that everyone's like, what about John Morant, including his own teammate? Um, what is that? Can, can we see a John Morant? Is that possible? So Shaden Sharp of, of the Trailblazers, rookie uh, phenom athlete, he's the second commitment uh, okay. so far for the dunk contest. So you've got those two as of right now. So Shaden Sharp is a big time athlete. The way he's able to get up, I know Chandler God. had commentary on him. Better, better, uh, I, I'm, better. I'm sure he's going with uh, yeah, he, he's going with I'll, Shaden Sharp already. I know he's got all his money down. Uh, but just he's had a few dunks this year where he's literally having to 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 battle <laughs> not hitting his head off the backboard. Uh, he gets up pretty high, um, but I, I don't think John Morant is a guy that the league is is expecting uh, to be a, a potential participant. But John Morant did have some thoughts yesterday yeah. in terms of who he thinks should be in the dunk contest. He mentioned Jericho Sims and Shaden Sharp himself. He's going to get at least one of, of, of the two in, in terms of Shaden Sharp. Okay, but this can we admit? Can we all just agree this is silly? The man everyone wants to see dunk is now nominating other people. Which no offense <laughs> to Jericho Sims, but we're all just wanting. I mean, including Cuz Cuz Kuzma, who was like, "What about you?" <laughs> like we want to see you. So I, you know, I'll ask you guys: Who else should join the dunk contest? Just simple. Yeah, I mean, you want star players. When I'm a, when I was a kid, I used to love the dunk contest because I would I would see Vince Carter. I would see guys like that that I knew who they were. Like most people don't know who Jericho Sims is. He is bouncy. It's crazy. Shaden Sharp, I think, is going to win this, and it's not even going to be close. This kid is so bouncy. I love him. I love his game. But again, he, he doesn't really have that name. He doesn't pack that punch. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And it's a great opportunity and a great show for these young guys that, you know, aren't household names, get a chance. But yeah, I'd love to see Jaw. I'd love to see Zion. You know, I'd love to see these star guys who dunk crazy and are super athletic, you know, do the dunk contest. But uh, again, with load management, with injuries, with the length of the season, I, I just don't see it happen zoom but it would be a lot more entertaining oh my yeah chandler said the right name zion like of course we'd love to see zion in in, in the dunk contest i'm gonna go with another number one overall pick as well anthony edwards can we see him mm. like what is the reason he's not gonna be in the game he's probably not gonna make the all-star game he's his rookie sophomore game days are, are long gone let's get anthony edwards on all-star saturday we've seen him put down some of the craziest dunks in the last three years we know he's got that in him well, he, he likes to have fun. Let, let's 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 try to get Ant. We get Ant. We get Ja. We get these two. We already got. We might have another legendary dunk contest on our hands. So I, I don't know, Shams. You got some juice, man. Can we put that in the air? Can we yeah. try to make <laughs> Ant, make it happen? Uh, out, come out there, like you, you got know, it out there, running back. Let's see, running back and make <laughs> it happen. I think the issue is a lot of these kids that don't make a lot of money get huge bonuses from their shoe deals, and the stars don't really care about making the bonus. So you see a lot of guys like KJ, like Jericho Sims, these guys, because right. they want that 500 grand or whatever it is to win the dunk contest. <laughs> Anthony Edwards, I think, would rather go to Bahamas or, or do something like that. So it's 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 tough. <laughs> but and, back in the day, like we got to see book. Dominique. <laughs> like, if you, I, well, there, yeah, there's probably also that. And we just want to break. But I, I do feel like I agree with Chandler, and I am much older than Chandler. So, so the names I remember were also gigantic names at the time. I would almost rather just watch and see if we can get any of the old legends. Can any of them still dunk? I'd rather watch that. I'd rather watch <laughs> Dominic Wilkins try to dunk. Like at this, and it's nothing against these young guys. I 100% understand why they want to do it, but it's as a person consuming the All Star festivities. The dunk contest was once a great, great pillar of the weekend, and I just I miss it. This is oh man, I'm like I'm that get off my lawn. I miss the good old days, guys. Damn it. All look, right, Shams. Look, Shams, oh, Shams <laughs> just break the news that Yuta is going to do the shooting, the three-point contest. That's what we're all oh, waiting he's for. Gotta we want to see Yuta one He's got to be in it. Leading the he league in be. shooting. And <laughs> also does. one of the best names to say in excitement. 
please. I need you, cannot, <laughs> you can't put that man in the three point contest. I don't. I don't. I think he would buckle severely under pressure. Oh, really? What do you well, think of top little- shooters in the NBA? I know he's having a great year. I know his percentages are high. But what do you think of the best shooters in the NBA? You think of Yuta? Right now, in this moment in time, he's got to be in the three point contest, Chandler. The way he should, he's leading in three point percentage on, on on in the corner side. I think he's shooting like sixty percent from the corners. I mean, yo, if he if he if he doesn't step up in the moment, then you're right. But you got to get him. Shoot, maybe I, yeah. it, he will not win it. But that's fair. But if money, the history man. books, I, really? I would say the history books show it, and then people will be like, "Who's this guy?" And they'll be like, "Well, that year he was very hot from the three point line, hence the invitation to the three point contest." It's a history book, a living one. Shams, we'll Chandler's see you tomorrow. Chandler's calling the shout right now. He, I know Chandler's just like, <laughs> no, you can't. Fine. We'll see Shams tomorrow. We're going to do a little That Man Has a Family. And we will start things off with a man who we just finished talking about, at least at the very beginning. Uh, KJ Martin on Eddie. Oof. This is all you. Look, this is clearly the best dunk of the season so far. I mean, when you take Obviously. into account who it's dunked on, I, I, I just kind of like when guys swing on the rim. Like, <laughs> Just let yeah. them know you dug on them. But a great it's putback. A Sometimes they just bounce perfect, and it just works yeah. out for you. And you can't block them if you don't see them coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that is just basic basketball fundamentals right there. Uh, bam. This bounce is crazy, too, because he's two foot. He's left foot. He's right foot. He can do it many he's different ways. everywhere. Uh, poor Joe Harris, though. I, I mean, what? Oh, man. That's hurtful. I swear to God, I think Bam out of Ohio is fifty. Sometimes I can't. I don't understand anything. Yo, we gotta, we gotta get the white guys to stop trying to take the Chargers That's on the much no. bigger players. That's all we got. <laughs> are you are you gonna wrap him up? Because if not, this is gonna happen. I it like how very, everybody uh, looks wait, around. Watch. Everybody looks around it's like, like a, concerned. Like, was it a, was it a charge? Oh no! And it was not. It definitely wasn't. <laughs> it's a very weird fall. It's a very soccer-esque fall. Well, his heels are also in the hash there, so he just set himself up for a complete disaster. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll be honest yeah. with you. Nice. I don't. When your face is level with another man's parts, I just don't think that's a good night. It's a tea no, bag. No. This is, this <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to lead. I wanted to lead Chandler to the water and see if he would drink. <laughs> oh, he would drink. <laughs> Oof. Seven this, foot oh. seven foot violence. This, this was amazing. Well, but by the way, Eddie, this is two white dudes. What do you want to happen here? I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, now we're splitting hairs here, but <laughs> impressive dunk either way. <laughs> this is a Finnish man, and I'm not I'm not sure where Vooch is from. I'm not gonna guess. Uh, impressive dunk though. Like what's wrong with you? <laughs> Lord Marketing got like, so strong out of nowhere. He's he's like he is bouncy he is thick he is jacked like he he hit the weights crazy this summer yo that's a crazy uh, runway the, off of off of that very, drive too like he, whew, got the two feet got the steps right that that was nice i'd watch that he yelled at him too that. he did right what did he yell the rim mic picked him hit picked him up doing the ah Smart <laughs> man, here. i hear i mean LeBron here's two yeah, of these back to back this was this was great mm. that's pretty this good is, See, this just sucks for the this just sucks for the film session tomorrow. That bogey has to sit there and and Nate is <laughs> rewinding this, rewinding this, just showing that the, all the other things he could have done besides just yeah. get out of the way and give him a free two point. Smart why man. did he get out of the way? Just why not? Yeah. I mean, you saw the Joe Harris clip, right? That's why he got out of the way. <laughs> I know, but like, but what if, what if it played out differently? A little the bit. only chance he has here is to take a charge, and, and, and <laughs> I still don't think that's going to work. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to play double. I mean, could have something else could have happened. Josh Hart uh, with a nice, nice little dunk, little dunky dunk on Chris Duarte. Yeah, he's a, he's a big right foot, left hand, which I think looks just way cooler than a than a left foot. Yeah. He's had some nice had dunks in his time. One of the stronger guys in the NBA too. And yo, just inside the dotted line, that's that's a nice takeoff right there. I like Whee! this. Yeah, that looks yeah. pretty. In the quarter. Yeah. Lots of flex yeah. too. Also, again, Dort, Chris Dort had just zero chance. Look at him. He had zero <laughs> chance of blocking this puff though. I'm blocking he barely this. Jumped. I like the effort. He, he, that's what I was this. wondering. Like he just kinda got up. Like, what was he doing? Yeah, I was gonna say, it's not really a full jump, is it? Like it's sort of 
Like he's gonna go vert, it's late, what do I do? It's like a, bu this is a buzzer beating dunk on too. Weird. Anything Josh weird. had that in him. <laughs> but, yeah, he uh, no, like, he had to have no. He didn't reach are, out. They're having fun. Pacers are anyways. Um, but not in that particular clip. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, should Kyrie be an all-star? And will Jason Tatum, what? Be the odd man out? Oh, this whole thing is rigged, I tell you. Run it back when we return. Run it off, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it off, run it back, run it off, run it back, run it off, run it back. Time to look at some lists, guys. All right, so the first round of all-star voting returns. These are the fans' votes came in late last week. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... I don't know if there's anything super shocking, but except for Kyrie Irving is sitting pretty atop that guards list by a bit, actually. It's a pretty good chunk between he and Donovan Mitchell. Are you guys surprised? I'll start with you, Eddie. You surprised? I mean, you see the reaction every night for him. He's still a fan favorite. No, not not surprised at all. I mean, he's he's one of the most exciting players in the league and has been for a decade. It's, it's one of the most fun to watch. And he has a ton of fans. Like, I know that he had a bunch of controversy this year. And he has in the last couple of years. And, but, you know, the Twitter noise can kind of be inflated and, and, and different from real life. Kyrie's a fan favorite in just about every arena he goes into. He gets massive yeah. ovations. And I'm not surprised to see him leading the guards in, in the East this year. And, and there's, you know, this is also the same reason why he's um, such a coveted sneaker free agent at the moment. And, and you know, everybody's kind of wondering, did Nike make a mistake? So, yeah, not only do I am I not surprised, I expect this to keep up. I, I don't see Mitch or, or James catching him up, catching up to him. And and I know this is only half of the vote for the starters, but the players also respect him as well. And, and I expect him to start this game for sure. Yeah, and first of all, he's he's balling. He's playing really really good. They're second in the East, and. and Fans, they have their short-term memory, and Kyrie Irving is the epitome of someone that you want to see in an All-Star game. He's flashy with his handle, his layup package, his ISOs one-on-one. -on -one. Like that's what you want to see in an All-Star game. You don't want to necessarily see centers. You don't want to see kind of boring <laughs> textbook players like that. So yeah, I'm not surprised at all. He deserves it, uh, and we're talking about an All-Star for this season in basketball. Yeah, he's the best guard in the East. Yeah, well, 26 it's, it's not a night, hurt. 48 from the floor. Like, that's that's an all-star. He's an all-star by his numbers as well. I, I well, like that, Chandler. And if KD has to sit out now for any amount of time, that's just the spotlight gets even hotter, which Kyrie seems to very much enjoy. The thing about it is, though, that's, that's weird. And again, it's a fan vote so far. But Jason Tatum at this moment in time is the odd man out, which feels kind of wrong, Chandler, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's we kind of predicted this because those four guys with Tatum, KD, Giannis, and Joel, one of them were going to be the guy out. I thought it would be Joel just because, you know, they've kind of flirted with that fourth, fifth, sixth seeding in the East. Um, Tatum has carried the Celtics pretty much all year long to be the most consistent, best team. And every time he's played, he's the best player on the floor. Uh, I think Jason Tatum should start. Now, I would probably put him over Joel, but... Joel's also having a crazy year and, and is vital to his team and dominates, but I got to give Tatum the nod here to start. And that is, again, fan votes. That's just half, so there's a lot more time, and it is pretty close. Um, the West also getting their votes in right now. I don't think it's a shock, but it is sort of maybe a spotlight on what's kind of wrong with the system sometimes. But Steph Curry right now first uh, among West guards in the fan vote, which, again, half the vote. Is he going to get player and media votes as well, even though he is out, Eddie? I mean, he should be back relatively soon. I, I, I think Maybe he Friday. Will. I mean, yeah, as soon as as soon as this weekend, and I think ultimately he'll end up missing. I think something like maybe eleven games, which is, you know, we've seen worse All Stars in our time. And at the end <laughs> of the day, people want to see him in the All Star game. He's the yeah. reigning, uh, he's the reigning MVP of the game. Like. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with him getting in. I'm not shocked he had these votes. I'm kind of shocked that LeBron continues to lead the conference and we we may be headed towards Team LeBron versus Team KD yet again. I I, I keep expecting Giannis and Steph to overtake them, but uh, no, it, it's not shocking at all. I mean, I, I think, you know, his competition for the guards out there is Luka. And, and mm. what, what does surprise me is third place right there. John Morant, barely above Shea Gilgis Alexander. Yeah. Uh, for all we hear about, you know, him being as popular as he is and he's a new, a new Nike signature guy, 
Um, kind of shocking to see him, not even a million votes thus far. So who knows when we get the next results, maybe they'll change. Uh, but yeah, he, he's behind. He's way behind in that race. And it looks like he won't be starting uh, in this all-star game. Yeah, for Steph, it's just yeah. the sooner he gets back, obviously, the more we can just by it the people want to see him play people want to see him shoot half court threes he's very very exciting to watch <laughs> um if he continues to miss more and more time do i think it's fair that he's in no but he's steph curry he's gonna come back this friday maybe and he's gonna dominate and we'll probably you know two three weeks from now we'll forget he even missed his time so again i have no problem with him in it um but i just think he needs to get back on the floor here to, to kind of solidify that well, I know, I know the Spurs are filling up the Alamo Dome this Friday. It's the big trying to break history thing. And Steph may or may not return for that particular game, which is a big deal. But yeah, you're right. LeBron on one side, Katie on the other. It's just deja vu all over again. And the drop off, like John not having a million. I, I would think by the time we do this again next week, things will have changed. Um, I think we're taking a quick break here. When we come back, Eddie, Eddie's responsible for losing our latest car leg. <laughs> and we'll talk about that and we'll do another one. And we'll probably win you guys tons and tons and tons of money. All when run it back. Return. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it up. Football fans, when you bet NFL same game parlays on the FanDuel Sportsbook from now through January 16th, you can get up to $100 in free bets, win or lose. All you have to do is place a total of $20 or more on NFL same game parlay bets during the wild card round. The more you bet, the more you'll get back in free bets. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, before we get to uh, today's three-leg parlay, we like to take trips down memory lane to see how we did before we left back way back on Wednesday. And um, Eddie, you know, tough break, buddy. We still love you. We still do. Yo, look at look at that over under. <laughs> like I went to bet the over because I just knew Steven Adams was going to terrorize the Hornets. I seen that number and got scared. I should have stuck to my guns. Like, what was I thinking? All I see I, is one I, yeah. W. All I see is one W. <laughs> yeah, but which is weird because I thought I got it right. And I'm like, oh, I Guess I was right. That graphic was wrong. Here's the deal, guys. I know that we all are sexist in this world, but let's not try to take away my shine on my role that I'm on here on this. Uh, I am so good at this. Brought, ever since we brought you in, you have been hot, Michelle. Yeah. So for the record, Eddie was the only wrong one on Wednesday's part. I just want that written down in somebody's diary. Uh, okay. This means we start a new streak today on this beautiful Monday. Eddie, take it away. Look, I'm riding the Lakers train. I'm sorry. I'm going with Russell Westbrook over eight and a half assists. And really, this is just because I wanted to highlight that video the Lakers put out over the week, <laughs> over the weekend, where LeBron is saying, "Yo, let's get greedy. Let's keep winning games." And then Russ yep. from across the locker room goes, "Hey guys, let's just have fun. How about that?" <laughs> so <laughs> it was the funniest thing I saw all weekend. So you know, go watch that video. But Russ has been killing it in his role. And I expect him to pick up a bunch of assists. They play the Nuggets, ton of drop coverage, walk straight into the paint, drop a little drop off uh, bucket off to a bunch of guys. Let's get that ninth assist, Russ. Please, please. All right. <laughs> Feels doable, right, Chandler? Yeah, I like that one. I like that one. I also I like, one. like the Bulls plus eight and a half. Listen, they're playing very good right now. They're healthy. They can score the basketball. Um, that's a lot of points. And, and again, I just I, I I like when you see a margin of points that big and the talent of the Bulls I think can help us cover the spread. So I like the Bulls plus eight and a half, and I feel like I've been pretty hot lately. I think I think you've been on a nice tear. The Celtics have also been confusing. Mine right here is CJ McCollum. They play Washington tonight. Uh, over twenty five and a half. I feel I feel decent about that. I get scared sometimes on these specifics, but we shall see. Uh, if you bet twenty bucks, you win about. 113 that ain't bad but that's gonna do it for us on this monday i know eddie looks surprised we will be back as always tomorrow and wednesday 10 eastern monday tuesday wednesday it's run it back we'll see you manana <laughs>